I tasted pork for the very first time without eating any pig meat. But is Impossible Pork this plant-based alternative halal? Let's find out. My name's Abrar and I'm a practicing Muslim, which means I don't eat pork. I have never been inclined to try it because there are plenty of other meat options I can enjoy. But when I heard about Impossible Pork, I was curious to know what this forbidden food tastes like and this seemed like the perfect opportunity to find out. You see, Impossible Pork is a plant-based product from Impossible Foods that has zero pork in it. Instead, it's made with ingredients like soy, sunflower oil, and coconut oil. That means it can be considered safe for people with certain religious or dietary restrictions to eat. Despite pork being really popular around the world, there are a lot of other people who also avoid pig meat because of their religion. Eating pork is forbidden in interpretations of faiths, including Islam, Judaism, and some sects of Christianity. So there's an opportunity here for Impossible Foods to give people like me a taste of something they wouldn't otherwise be able to try. I sampled the new product at Impossible Foods' headquarters in Redwood City, California. I feel really excited, but also nervous. Like this feels kind of wrong. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, it's really exciting. I think it'll be interesting to know what this tastes like. Um, but yeah, there's a part of me that's like, okay, so you're, so you're really doing this, uh, but I know it's totally safe, so I'll be fine. It smells, the meat, it doesn't smell very strongly of meat. I think there's also, because there's all these vegetables in this bond meat, it kind of um, overtakes the smell, but there's a little bit, I mean, there is a little bit of a, of a very like soft, like not too powerful, overpowering meat smell, but so far it seems palpable, which is good. I think I'm making the right decision here. I'm very excited. <laughs> it still feels so wrong <laughs> because it feels like meat. I'm fine. I was gonna say there isn't really like a distinct taste except for like the taste of like wrong, but like I kind of want to try a piece of the meat by itself because altogether it tastes good, but. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. I think I'm actually shaking right now. Like, <laughs> there's something in me that's like, this looks like meat, it smells like meat, tastes like meat. Um, it feels slightly wrong to be eating this just because like my whole life, it's been like, I, I can't eat pork. I can't, eat. I feel like there have been times where I've almost accidentally eaten something that has pork in it. Like sometimes there'll be like, pizza that has like pepperoni under the cheese and it's like snuck in, you don't realize so you bite into it. So I'm kind of having those same emotions of like, I'm eating this thing that I know is made of, it is made to be similar to something I cannot eat. And so there's there's like that flavor that like, that I'm supposed to avoid, that I now know what it tastes like and I can eat it. It's like a really, there's a lot going on in my brain right now. Um, so yeah, it, it feels, it's, it's very, there's a lot that's very confusing. <laughs> I don't, I'm trying to think of whether I would walk into a restaurant and be like, hey, I would like an impossible pork sandwich. Like, I don't know if I'll get to that point. I guess, I really don't think I will, to be honest, because I have other options. Like I could eat chicken instead. I could eat beef instead. I'm excited to try this in this situation because like I've never had this type of flavor before, but I doubt that I would be the kind of person who will be like, hey, I'm just gonna have pork all the, like impossible pork all the time now. Since I last tried impossible pork, the company has made some small adjustments to the flavor and texture. Impossible food scientist, Laura Kilman said, since previewing impossible pork at CES 2020, we've improved the texture, lowered the sodium and made some other minor changes to ensure springiness and flavor but the average consumer probably wouldn't notice the difference. Even though I was nervous about trying Impossible Pork, I was not prepared for the blowback I got after I shared my experience on Instagram. People from all over the world flooded my post with comments saying they were shocked I would try such a thing. Heck, I bet even this video you're watching right now has charged comments. All the debates just made me more curious about the religious implications of a product like this. And thankfully my family and friends didn't have any issues with me trying Impossible Pork. In fact, they were just as intrigued by it as I was. When Impossible Pork was first announced, the company said it was designed for halal and kosher certification. But so far, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Impossible Foods now says it's not moving forward with those certifications because, quote, the authorizing bodies will not certify a product called pork, and they wanted to keep that term in the product name. 
When we stopped by the company's headquarters in late 2019 to interview CEO Pat Brown, he didn't seem to anticipate any pushback from religious leaders and communities. As I understand it, the, the religious prohibitions are, are quite specific to the animal and not, not to the flavor profile or something like that. So, and in fact, I mean, it's a product made entirely from plants. It would surprise me if, if that raised any issues, just being called for it. In a recent statement, a company representative told us, we named our product Impossible Pork made from plants so that consumers understand what the product is. Our target market is people that currently consume pork from pigs, and satisfying this audience is how we achieve our long-term mission of eliminating animals from the food system. But the decision not to certify impossible pork as halal or kosher reflects the hesitation of some religious leaders. This is Mustafa Omar, an imam based in Anaheim, California. We interviewed him early last year, along with other Muslim and Jewish leaders, soon after impossible pork was unveiled. Pork is prohibited in Islam, and um, anything that kind of resembles uh, pork is kind of like uh, anathema to just Muslim desires, sensibilities, tastes. Uh, so it's it's kind of like uh, saying, hey, you know, I know you Muslims can't eat pork, but we'll try and give you something that is almost exactly the same thing. Omar says if a member of his congregation said they wanted to try a product like Impossible Pork, his response would vary based on who's asking him. If it was somebody who is, let's say, a convert to Islam or somebody who used to eat a lot of pork and they became accustomed to it and it's challenging for them uh, to kind of adjust that's perfectly fine. You know, you can consume it because it's technically it's not pork, so it's OK. It's not it's not a problem. But in terms of somebody who uh, has never really eaten it before, uh, I would not encourage them and I would not even recommend that they try it uh, because there really wouldn't be much benefit in doing so. Other religious leaders like Dawood Yassin aren't as averse to the idea of a plant-based pork product. Yassin is the director of student life at Zaytuna College, a private Muslim liberal arts college in Berkeley, California. He says because impossible pork doesn't contain any actual pig meat, he can't find a reason why it would be prohibited in Islam. I was thinking about this in terms of um, like a Quranic verse, uh, which says, Allahu khalaqa lakum ma fil ard jimyan. God has created for you all that is on the earth. And if you take that, that means that there's permissibility in all things except for, and then the category comes in a different verse in chapter 5 about which things have been pro prohibited. And the prohibition is related to animal-based proteins, but we're talking about plant-based proteins. Is this something that you would be willing to eat yourself? Probably no, to be honest with you. I would probably say no. Because I'm kind of like, look, I, so I wasn't Muslim for 26 years of my life. So I'm not, you know, pork is not something that's new to me. It's not something that, you know, I ate pork in my life prior to, to, to Islam. So for me, it's kind of like what I drink in old duels, right? Like a non-alcoholic beer. For me, it's, it's, it's not, I don't see any need for it. Rabbi Yosef Langer, executive director of Shabbat of San Francisco, has his own take. What would you say if other followers in the faith expressed interest in trying something like Impossible Pork? I would say, let me, let me cook some food for you. I'm a chef. In fact, Langer cooked us some fake and bacon wrapped hot dogs before our interview to show that plant-based pork products are permissible. He says there's an understandable stigma in the Jewish community surrounding products that imitate pork, but that it's important for people to keep an open mind. Kosher goes very deep. It, 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 it goes into our homes. It, it, it has an influence on our children when they're out in, in the world. And so parents and grandparents um, are very concerned about that. Um, however, I think there's always another side to the, to the coin that we also have to take a look at, because if we're too strict with our, with our, our children, then they're going to run away regardless. As Brown told us back in 2019, the release of Impossible Pork could be a chance for people to try something new. For those um, Jewish people and Muslims who who have always wanted to eat a pig. I doubt there are many, but <laughs> but if there are any, uh, this is the opportunity. Impossible Foods is just one of the many companies tapping into a growing appetite for plant-based alternatives. Competitor Beyond Meat also sells plant-based ground meat and sausages, and several other companies offer products like plant-based bacon, sausages, meatballs, and even fish. I actually had the chance to try plant-based bacon at CES last year and was a big fan. 
this was really <laughs> good. And this was like, so I've never had pork bacon, but I've had turkey bacon. And so the consistency is pretty oh, similar. Right. And But I love the sweetness of this because I have a massive sweet tooth. Despite any heated debates about Impossible Pork's religious permissibility, Yassine says he's glad discussions are being had to hopefully prevent people from boycotting the product just because of its name. I'm happy that this conversation is taking place. I, I, I would hate to see uninformed Muslims rallying around you know, protesting this, and it's kind of like facepalm, like, when are you protesting? It's plant-based, right? You know? And so it would just be a tragedy. While I did have fun trying Impossible Pork, I prefer my meals without a side of guilt. My takeaway is that I don't feel like I've missed out on anything my entire life. I think I'm good with not having ground pork. I'm, I'm quite all right with like chicken and beef, that's fine. It's really exciting to see how technology makes certain things possible that we didn't imagine were possible before. Like I never thought that I'd be eating a pork sandwich that I can eat. So I'm really excited to see what other kinds of innovations come along that allow people to eat things that they traditionally wouldn't be able to eat. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content from CNET. And thank you to the religious leaders who shared their thoughts with us and to Impossible Foods for inviting me out to try this product. It truly was a memorable experience.